Did you know that no one is wearing 3D printed shoes? Literally no one is searching for it. The top video on the subject is the one from this channel a couple of years ago and that's sad. So let's push 3D printed shoes up the algorithm again by running not one but two marathons with the 3D printed shoe. Why only one you ask? Because this happened and I didn't want to wait another 24 hours to print one. Also, I didn't have more flexible material. Also, it's actually pretty expensive. The sole estimated weight is 300 grams or $25 and the shoe 500 grams or $40. That's $65 for just the materials and this is just a wasted 40. My idea for 3D printed shoes is simple. It has to be all plastic, no fabric. Everything has to be made by the 3D printer, except the laces. I'm calling it right now, not doing this again. It's made out of a very flexible, but yet not flexible enough material. Okay, I'm just gonna... You see, it's, it's very flexible. The level of breathing is non-existent, and you know, that's kind of the problem. I'm considering punching a bunch of holes just to have some air intake. I guess if you wanted to go all the way out, you could have sections that you cut out, and then you could have like a mesh that you glued on the inside, and so you would have air intake. But yeah, I'm not gonna do that. All the same material, the bottom side, I don't care about because it's gonna be glued on the sole. Speaking about the sole, this one turned out really well. This is a TPU, way harder. You see that? Way harder. It will look something like this when it's done. Just glue them together. And I did go out and get this kind of glued. Did I have some footage of that? cannot make this stuff up. We were meant for each other. So I went out asking my followers on Instagram, you know, outsourcing my job, riding on the YouTube cloud, because I mean, let's face it, this just wouldn't fly. My name is Trevor. It's the sole of the shoe. Just a web of um, different columns, uh, twisting, uh, weaving kind of within, in and out of each other. So, so what you can see here is I, I added some padding in the middle here within the design. It's all about just creating a, a bit of a cushion so that your heel doesn't uh, feel the force as much. The 3D lattice pattern main purpose is shock absorption, but it also gives it a futuristic look. Even though on mine it left a lot of string and going from each column, it's not as clean looking as these ones, but hey, it's all about the experimentation. Back to the upper shoe. Retraction tends not to work as efficiently with softer materials causing these leftover bits that have to be just scrubbed off.
only did the two parts separate, but the most upper back support was stabbing into my heart. A defeated Simon walked home after 860 meters. You see, the, the only problem I have is, is this. Can you zoom in here? I'm just gonna have to cut away even more on the back side. I know that it, it doesn't feel great because that's, that back section is kind of what locks the foot in. The riveted side works very well dot com. This side, I didn't do any rivets and this came apart about two kilometers in. I guess there is a pretty good chance that you can't see me or hear me particularly well right now. I thought I would give you an update. It's been about 10 kilometers. Is there a f***ing car coming? Uh, two kilometers left. I have another three kilometers left, which leaves us at 14, 15, 16, 17 kilometers today. Not too shabby. The following days I ran, mostly walked, <clears throat> but ended up with another 25 kilometers. The full 100 kilometers did take me 16 hours and 30 minutes, which is 9 minutes and 54 seconds pace, which is faster than walking pace, but not by much. So the running scenes you're watching right now is really to make me feel better about myself putting running in the title. Mostly I was doing this. Yeah, I'm walking. You know what's you know what's messed up about YouTube is that I'll probably just say this is day seven. It's day 15. It took me 15 days to run 91.15 kilometers. I can finally see the light at the end of the tunnel. And today I'm proving once and for all that 3D printed shoes, not a good idea, terrible idea. Do not do it. I'm just doing it so you don't have to. All right, starting my final exercise. Three, two, one. 
All right, here we go. It's not pretty. It's not. Five kilometers left. So I ran nine kilometers in three and a half hours. So let's go to the home screen and there you go. 100.2 kilometers. So the fact that you can make a custom made shoe, you can put anything on it and you can make it any, any size, any shape. It's really cool. It's a cool idea. But you know, making it from home, yeah, like... Mm, let's put the material under the microscope and see how much damage that's been done from 100k. I reckon it's not that much. A few missing pieces on the bottom side. The back side is still attached with only glue. I have no rivets on the back side or the front side. The bond up front didn't quite last. To be fair, that delamination happened at 60 kilometers. So I ran a good portion with the sole just like this. The holes where the laces goes in did break on my first attempt a couple of years ago. This time I tied the shoes really firmly a couple of dozen times. And as you can see, it's perfectly fine. So I was really surprised to see that. I was also really surprised to see that the layer adhesion on both the black flex material and the TPU seemed to have been just perfect. So the temperature when I was printing seemed to have been just spot on because I can't still, I can't pull this apart. I was sure that we were going to see some delamination between the layers after, who knows, like 10 kilometers. But hey, it still looks like it could, but hey, re-glue this part and put a rivet in and I think this could go for another 100k. If you would like a success-ish shirt, it's available in the description below. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you all have a fuck. Man.